pretty smart. <laughs> Hi, Tia. Hi. Oh, it's so nice to see you all, and you're all in the same room this time. It's been a couple years since we chatted. Um, too long. Too long, yeah. For Bobby and Tan, I'm the Mariah guy. I think she's behind me still. I um, remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's nice to see you all. I'm having a little bit of 2020 deja vu right now because I'm interviewing you. Omicron, things are shutting down. Everything is weird again. You're How interviewing are you? Omicron? <laughs> Tell her we hate her. Big deal. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> she can go back home. Yeah. Uh, how are you guys doing? How are you Good feeling? Well. Thank you. Good. Um, well, I have to say, first of all, I'm sad not to see Karamo. Um, uh, David from Netflix told me that I needed to tell you because I just told him that I learned this from my mom that he wouldn't be a part of the interview because she was watching The View this morning and she called me and said, Chris, I just don't think, I don't think Karamo's going to be at the interview. I don't think he's going to be I think I love your mom. <laughs> <laughs> she should really be the one doing this interview. <laughs> um, I, uh, I have to say, I watched it with her um, the day it premiered. Uh, she came over, we watched it together. I don't know if you realize, you know, the influence obviously that you have on the people that um, you, whose lives you change in the show, but also people like me and my mom who like are going through a bit of a rough patch and things are hard and um, I just want to tell you that the people on the other uh, the other end of the screen are also sort of experiencing the same sort of joy that you bring to these people's lives um, in the show. So, and I hope things you. get better with your mom. Truly, I do. Thank you. Oh, thanks. That's sweet. Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, you must hear that all the time. But what does that feel like six seasons in to know that you bring that sort of level of joy? to people. I mean, you all have your own individual lives. To, so to be able to inspire people on that level, what does that mean to you now at this point in your, in the show and in your, in your lives? I remember watching the first iteration of Queer Eye with both my grandparents and my, and my mom uh, and my stepdad in the little like family room and the conversations that the original Fab Five were able to open up for my family and I, and to give my grandparents um, something to see for us to talk about that was kind of, this is like random, but occupational, like seeing queer people in an occupational sense and being able for us to like talk about something that like, it was really humanizing. And I think now in 2021 and, you know, since we debuted 2018 and, you know, such hats off to the original Fab Five and the original Queer Eye, but I think, that, and also this is Netflix as well. Like we're able to just be more full bodied versions of ourselves. And I think that just this series is, is more able to be a little bit more, um, just like authentic or something or just maybe authentic is the wrong word more transparent and we can just show more and so I think that's really special and, and I know what a difference that the first one did made in my life and in my family and my personal experience so to to even feel that we get to be a part of that experience for other people and on such a large scale I mean I have like I, I have chills thinking about it it's, it's just such an honor and we're really um I think every day all of us are very honored that we get to be a part of that process yeah, Bobby, I was just talking about this with somebody uh, on that note, Jonathan, about you and your transformation. And I just feel like you have really come into yourself. Um, maybe it's this season, maybe it's the last season. I mean, I've always enjoyed watching you, but I feel like there has been a transformation. Do you recognize any kind of transformation in your own life that has translated to the show? A transformation in, in myself? Yeah. I definitely feel I'm, I'm more comfortable with myself. You know, I, I, I was a very awkward kid. I mean, I'm still a very awkward adult, uh, but I, I've learned to embrace that a bit more. You know, it's... I think we all, especially in the gay community, we, we compare ourselves a lot to other people and other things, and I've learned not to do that. And I think that's, that's become more apparent and as seasons have come on that I've just become more comfortable with, with me. Yeah, um, that's good to hear. I, uh, I was, uh, you know, you know that I've watched the show with my mom. Um, it's no surprise that we cried a lot during the show. Um, and you all did as well. So uh, we were right there with you crying. Um, and I was wondering, was this, I mean, given everything, you know, I feel like uh, everyone's a little more tense, maybe even more emotional. Was this a more emotional season for you to go through? And what did that feel like for, for you all? Yeah, I, I oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say yes, yes. absolutely <laughs> yes. You know, I, I think by the time we got done filming season five, we had filmed five, technically six because Japan is a season as well, but it's not numbered. We have filmed six seasons in a very short amount of time. And I think that we were all emotionally exhausted. 
Like we, it, it really does take a toll on us, a toll on us emotionally connecting with these people every single day because we do put our heart and soul into every single hero that we meet. So to kind of have that year off to fill those coffers of emotion back up, but at the same time also realize by being cut off from the world and from each other and from literally the people living right next door to, to realize how important that personal connection was to when we finally were able to get it back. Mm -hmm. It was just a flood of emotion. And so I, I definitely think this is our most emotional Caesar series yet because we, we realized how important that human connection really is and what happens to our little hearts and souls when we don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious, thanks, Bobby. I was curious what you were gonna say, Anthony, because I think, I don't know, I didn't count the number of times that you got emotional, but it definitely seemed like you were more emotional this season. I mean, I think, you know, I'm, I'm always touched by somebody's vulnerability or when they share a certain part of themselves. Um, but I think coming into this, you know, I, I, I came at it with, with a slightly different lens because I think, at least on my own journey over the pandemic, I had this newfound appreciation for, for like the little things in life, like the little moments sitting on the couch watching TV with my boyfriend and like just a lot more gratitude. Um, I, I cry at a lot of sad things, but I like to cry at a lot of like joyous things when I see, I cry at kindness. And I think that came through um, very much in this season, especially with, you know, if you look at like Jamie with Safe in Austin, I knew there was something up with that episode. Our producers weren't telling us as much or telling me as much at least uh, as they usually do with other episodes. Cause I knew, thought, think that they knew that I'd be like really triggered by this wonderful story of this woman who's like just doing like God's work, connecting um, uh, animals with, with, with people. And just to, to come in and, and meet Jamie, somebody who started this out of a very personal story of just wanting to help her son um, you know, uh, who had issues and pairing him with a service animal at a very young age. And she decided she wanted other people to have that experience as well. So, um, yeah. Sorry, we have people from the building across the street waving at us. So Other we dancers. Back. <laughs> do, they, do you know them? They know you. Oh, yeah. We're just in New York in the building. Well, you know, I think you're assuming you're in New York. The buildings are very close. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Of course, they're are they freaking out? <laughs> Amazing. I love that. Um, you must get that everywhere you go now at this point, right? Sweet. He's always so kind to us. Yeah, I bet. Um, I, uh, so. <laughs> I don't use Twitter, I don't know. <laughs> ignorance is bliss sometimes. What's that? I said, I don't use Twitter, ignorance, ignorance is bliss sometimes. Oh yeah, no, stay off there. You're better off not being on Twitter as I can attest. <laughs> I, um, I was wondering um, while you were living in Austin together uh, and during COVID, I imagine that you were even more of a pod than you usually are, right? Yeah. Given like safety protocol. Yeah. Um, okay, so like, did that bring you closer together, first of all, in any ways? And second of all, what new things did you learn about each other living in, clo in such close? Well, not to like burst anyone's bubble, but we shoot 60 hours a week, 45 to 60 hours for like an episode that gets, so we are together like all the fucking time, like from like really early to like late. So when we're done working, like I want to go to my husband. He wants to go to his husband. He wants to go to his man's. He wants to go yeah. to his man's. And like, I got five cats to feed. I got two dogs. We're busy women, you know? Yeah. So it's just like, I got to get home when we're done. But while we are shooting, it's all about snacks, needlepointing, yes. Karamo yes. TikTok. And temperature. We've lear we learned this year that Jonathan he, is very good at needlepointing. And he's really like, Bobby is like such a sweet, docile creature. Um, between the temperatures, not like, like temperature. uh, between 60, just listen, between like 65 and about 74. Yeah. Two. But anything but two, two. Yeah. So anything below 65, anything above 72, we are not, oh, I guess anything above 72. Yeah. yeah. Cold spine. Anything below will, 85 for Karamo is, <laughs> is horrible. And also like Bobby <laughs> and hot yeah, temperatures yeah. it hurts his eyes and then he can't wear the outfits that he wants and he becomes very grouchy sometimes the light like sometimes the houses will just fall apart and we'll be like oh my god was it too hot when bobby did this like the key it'll just like cave in it's like oh my god bobby got too hot when he designed this <laughs> like, i overheated just see that never happens it does not happen it doesn't happen we do it together we do. Uh, you know what we also do um that is that is fun um and why i don't drive anymore really except for like once a season i will just fucking leave the picture car i see a hardy's and i'm like cameron diaz at my best friend's wedding my exit ah i'm getting cinnamon raisin biscuits i'm getting everything but they discontinued those so it's like been really hard yeah but, um, 
<laughs> oh my gosh well i'm i'm I, you're, i'm keeping you close to my heart jonathan i'm sorry i'm, I'm sorry you're going through such you know that they discontinued yeah. them have you ever I didn't, know that, I, I didn't i don't keep up with hardy's menu i'm sorry you guys liked them they're they actually them. legit you like no like joke them, right? legit wait the food guy the food guy says they're legit the icing yeah. to biscuit ratio so good at the risk of pissing off bobby i'm gonna just tell a really fast story <laughs> The last time I had a cinnamon raisin biscuit before I knew they were going to just get discontinued, I was in Oklahoma. I was driving back to Texas from New York in the pandemic because obviously couldn't fly. I saw a cinnamon raisin biscuit. I got off the road. I got it. I took a bite into it. The liquid hot magma of the icing, I didn't realize. There was like a hard shell, but then the inside was hot. Oh. So I bit into it and this plot fell out. It burned my hands so bad. I almost <laughs> ran into two semis. I went off the road all the way into the middle of the median thing. Like, what? no, literally it burned my hand. And I was like, oh, like all like it goes. We all like like literally. The, Liza was out of her cage because she got oh. diarrhea, so she couldn't be in her cage. So she it was just it was a mess, honey. I was burned, oh, and that's the last yeah. experience I had with cinnamon raisin biscuits, and then they got discontinued. A day I in the life like of so, Jonathan. I feel like, I feel like so much of our is, that, <laughs> is that really just a day? <laughs> that's just not today. Like three hours complete. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more than that. Do you? I wonder how much it really is. <laughs> oh, um, oh, two almost hours every week. episode. Anytime we're in the car. Mm. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to ask you in Austin, in Texas. I don't know how how many times you all been to Texas, but who walked away? Who left Texas with the most cowboy boots? I you. left with two pairs. I, no, I think pairs. I left with. I think then the, then okay. the same. Yeah, I, okay. I can't say I've worn any of them since then. Um, yeah. But I'm originally from Texas, so I already had some. Oh right, of course. Yeah, yeah you've got your own stash. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, as like a. I live in Michigan. I'm in Michigan and country music's big out here. Um, so I have to say, like, you know, Miranda Lambert is obviously one of the biggest country music. Singers. Yes, queen, go queen, dip it like a dairy queen. Thank you. Put Thank your you. in a big you haul no. It's so it's so good. Yeah, and yes, no, yeah, you can keep going. Um, I, but I need to yeah. I need to tell you that like First of all, I've loved her for a long time. I love her for doing this. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, this song would not exist. I don't know how you managed to do this. Who managed to do this? Hats off to them. Um, but it's you, the Netflix PR folks who are in But y'all means all is like pretty freaking brilliant. It's like, it's so simple. It is. And there's so much meaning behind it. I'm still like blown away by 100, it. 100%. Uh, so do you all recognize the importance of having somebody like her? um Miranda Lambert perform a song like this that is all about inclusivity I just imagine the fans that she's reaching who like you do the people that you reach who aren't necessarily maybe they've never met a queer person um go ahead yeah. no I'm just like I'm totally agreeing with you it's like when you take something like country music which you know I'm not gonna get into all of like the generalizations behind it but it's like you have somebody who's a fan and then you have like a parent who has certain views and I'm trying to be as politically correct and Canadian as I can right now, but like they suddenly hear her singing about something like that and that like normalized it. It makes it less, less of this like thing mm -hmm. to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's, it's, it's important when it comes up in like in music and art and TV, it's all of it. It was nice to see you all. And I want to thank you so much for, thank you so much. Um, thank you. for all the work you did. Give your mama a hug from us. Yeah. Yeah.